Sri Ramakrishna on Guru. One, the Guru is one, but Upagurus, the secondary teachers, may be many. He is an Upaguru from whom anything whatsoever can be learned. It is mentioned in the Bhagavata that the great Abhaduta, an advanced yogi, had twenty-four such Upagurus. Two, one day. As the Abhaduta was walking across a meadow, he saw a bridal procession coming towards him with loud beating of drums and great pomp. On the other side, he saw a hunter deeply absorbed in aiming at his game and perfectly inattentive to the noise and pomp of the procession, casting not even a passing look at it. Abhaduta, saluting the hunter, said, "Sir, thou art my guru." When I sit in meditation, let my mind be concentrated upon the object of meditation, as thine has been on your game. Three, an angler was fishing in a pond. The abaduta approaching him asked, "Brother, which way leads to such and such place?" The float of the rod at that time was indicating that the fish was nibbling at the bait. So the man did not give any reply, but was all attention to his fishing rod. Having first hooked the fish, he turned round and said, "What is it you have been saying, sir?" Abhaduta saluted him and said, "Sir, thou art my guru. When I sit in contemplation of the deity of my choice, let me follow the example. And before fishing, my devotions, let me not attain to anything else." Four, a kite with a fish. in its beak was followed by a host of crows and other kites which were picking at it and trying to snatch the fish away in whatever direction it went its tormentors followed it cawing till at last they made it let go the fish in vexation another kite instantly caught the fish and was in its turn followed by the whole lot the first kite was left unmolested and sat calmly on the branch of a tree Seeing this quiet and tranquil state of the bird, Avaduta saluting him said, "Thou art my guru, for thou hast taught me that peace of mind is possible in this world only when one has given up one's adjuncts, upadhi. Otherwise, there is a danger at every step." Five, a heron was slowly walking on a marsh to catch a fish. Behind there was a fowler aiming an arrow at the heron but the bird was totally unmindful of this fact the abaduta saluting the heron said when i sit in meditation let me follow thy example and never turn back to see who is behind me 7 men as spiritual guides can be had by hundreds of thousands but it is hard to get a single disciple is an ancient saying many are the persons who can give good advice but few are who care to follow it eight should a genuine love of god come to a person and should he be anxious to perform devotional exercises god would surely provide him with a properly qualified guru there need be no anxiety about one nine doctors are either first class second class or third class The third class doctor feels the pulse of the patient and advises him to take some drug. He then goes away and does not care to inquire if the patient actually takes the medicine or not. The second class doctor tries to impress on his patient that he will come round by using the medicine prescribed and adopts all gentle means to induce his unwilling patient to take it. The first doctor when he finds that his patient is determined not to take the medicine does not hesitate to put his knee on the chest of the patient and force the medicine down his gullet in like manner the guru who having given religious instruction to his disciple takes no further notice of him is a guru of the third class he who for the sake of the disciple's good hammers his instruction into him till they are grasped and shows that he is interested in the disciple's welfare is a guru of the second class and he who finding that the disciple does not properly listen to or follow his teachings enforces obedience by compulsion is a guru of the first class